All right. Up to this point, we've talked about structures we think of as f coming from ionic ceramics. So even if they are have some covalency to it, we've kind of lumped these all together with ionic ceramics. Now we're going to jump ahead and kind of focus on structures that are related to covalent ceramics. And so to start with that, I want to mention the uh, silicate structure and kind of build up from uh, small silicate tetrahedron up to greater structures. So let's look at silicates. So a silicate is basically silicon and oxygen. Um, and so silicon, we've talked about uh, in the hybridization section, um, can have sp3 hybridization, where we form these four lobes in the tetrahedral arrangement, and we have that 109.5 degree angle between the various lobes, and we saw that uh, we form those you know, four orbitals or lobes, each half filled, so they want to bond to other lobes. And so if we put an oxygen on each one of those lobes, that would give us a tetrahedron, right? So we have silicon, uh, if we think of it as uh, ionic, we'd have silicon four plus, and then oxygen two minus on each uh, lobe, forming the tetrahedron that you see here. So that's a silicate. Um, we can also have other tetrahedron of silicon uh, with carbon or nitrogen or other more ionic uh, compounds as well. So uh, silicon carbide would be based off of this uh, tetrahedron. Silicon nitrides will be based off of this tetrahedron, right? So we have silicates, carbides, and nitrides. So we're going to focus on silicates, but a lot of the underlying uh, effects would apply to other uh, structures like carbides and nitrides. So let's look at, um, we've talked about the zinc blend structure, right? Silicon carb, uh, cubic uh, silicon carbide has this zinc blend structure, and we saw that it was the tetrahedron, right? Everything has a coordination number four. Uh, and so silicon carbide um, forms into uh, this type of structure. So that's just another uh, example of the tetrahedron. So we saw this even when we were talking about quote unquote ionic ceramics. So there was even elements of um, covalency. And so that's why we kind of came up with the, the rule that that uh, tetrahedral arrangement is tied to covalency uh, because we see it in a lot. Right, so silicon and carbon in this case. All right, so we're talking about silicates. That was silicon carbide, but we're talking about silicates for the most part. And the reason we care about silicates um, is because they actually predominantly compose, or the sorry, the Earth's crust predominantly is composed of these materials. And so they're very prolific. And so that's why we, we care about them. Uh, but again, they have that SiO4, and so this is kind of a two-dimensional representation of it. Um, and we uh, think about silicates in two different ways. We think about the oxygens in two different ways. So we can have a case where the oxygen in the tetrahedron, shown here, is either um, bonded to two silicon. So you can see it kind of forms a chain here. So this oxygen is bonded to this silicon and this silicon, or we have um, sorry about that. Or we have an oxygen like this one over here that's only bonded to one silicon. So that's the defining feature of these oxygens. So the ones bonded to two, like this one here, is a bridging oxygen. And then over here, or up here, where the oxygen is only tied to one silicon, that's a non-bridging oxygen. So it's only bonded to one silicon atom. So that's how we kind of think about these oxygens uh, because it tells us a lot about the structure that we're gonna get in the greater silicate structure. So the way we can get more of these non-bridging oxygens in a given silicate structure um, is by, um, we can increase the number of these non-bridging oxygens uh, by a number of factors. Uh, so we can increase the amount of alkali or alkali earth metal oxides that we add. So this is the M plus that we see over here. Because that addition will break up these kind of 
bonds between the various tetrahedron um, and give us more non-bridging oxygens or MBOs, NBOs. And so that has the effect of increasing this oxygen to silicon ratio. So instead of talking about the relative number of non-bridging oxygens, we just talk about the fact that it'll have more oxygens relative to silicons if we have more non-bridging. And so the other effect of it is that increasing the non-bridging oxygens breaks down the structure. So you can see here that by adding these M plus um, metal oxides, we've breaking, broken up this network. So over here, this was bonded together, but by adding this metal oxide, we've broken apart this network. So we break it into smaller and smaller units. So let's kind of backtrack again and talk about the silicate tetrahedron. And let's prove it to ourselves that this is the, the case. So Pauline's first rule was about the cation to anion ratio. Right? So if we do the math here for Si4 plus and O2 minus, this is cation anion ratio. If we divide those two numbers, these are from your textbook, so you can go and look up these values if you want to verify. Then uh, we get 0.331, and that's above the threshold for uh, coordination number of four. So based on that, this is the configuration we should have for oxygen and uh, silicon. And also, if we compare the um, oxygen, uh, silicon and oxygen uh, electro neutralities, we see that um, you know they are um, they are relatively close. They're not the closest, obviously, but they are closer than a lot of the ionic ceramics. So they have a degree of covalency, which would imply that we have a directional bond uh, in these cases. All right, so. When we build up these silicates, uh, we're also going to look at Pauline's third rule, right? And that was where the polyhedra would rather share corners or vertices compared to edges and then faces. This is the least stable because the cations are closest. This is the next uh, least stable, and then this is the most stable. And you can see here that the distance between those cations is furthest apart. So these rules still apply to cations as well. We want to typically try to avoid having the cations or the silicon, in this case, too close together.